Here we go. This is your Ibn Kathir book. Hmm? Chapter 34, verse number 14. And this is the interpretation of your fellow, Ibn Kathir. And it says here, Mujahid and Hassan and others and blah, 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 blah. They said that he stayed, read carefully, let me zoom in. He stayed like that. Like that what? He was leaning on the stick. He remained leaning on his stick after he died. Okay? So he stayed like that for how long? He stayed like that for a long time, nearly a year. And when the creatures of the earth, which kind of worms, talking about termite, chew his stick, it becomes so weak and he fell in the ground. Obviously, this is a story no one can come with except a prophet of God like Muhammad. Nobody noticed. And this is what we witnessed today, actually. The guy, his name is Philip. He did not notice that Moses believed in the original sin. It doesn't say that CP. So here we have a clear proof that Muhammad, he have a big purpose of Islam, is to believe in cartoon and Mickey Mouse. You know, Suleiman, he have a flying carpet, can fit for 600,000 chair. He can carry all his kingship in the top of it. Uh, Suleiman, he, uh, uh, he went to the bathroom. He gave his ring, the Lord of the ring, you know, which controlled the kingdom uh, to his wife because it's haram to take the, the, the ring of Allah inside the bathroom. Uh, and then the shaitan he came in the image of uh, Suleiman he took the ring and he wore it and then he became the king and then Suleiman he lost his kingdom and then with the wives they noticed that this new husband or Suleiman but he is like his shaitan but he is in the image of Suleiman he is so good in bed which is not right I mean they noticed that he never stopped like never 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 stop never stop so they notice that this is going to be true. This is not the power of sexual drive of a human. So they told the elders and the elders decide to kick him out because he, there's no way this is Suleiman. And then Shaitan, when he heard they would do that, he ran away from the palace and he threw the, king, the ring. I mean, here the story is really stupid. I mean, if the guy, he controlled everything by the ring and he is wearing the ring, who cared about the elders? <laughs> Anyway, just let it go, let it go. I mean, don't ask questions. If the second you ask questions, Islam collapsed. So he, he went and he threw the ring in the ocean, brother. And then Suleiman, because he was kicked out from the palace, he became a putter. Not Harry Potter, this is the for putter, the one who carries stuff for people in the port. So one day there was a guy, he bought fish. And Solomon, he says to him, I will carry those fish for you to your home. What you give me in return? The guy, he said to him, I will give you a fish or two fish, you know, as a payment. Suleiman, he carried the fish for this guy to his door. And then the guy, he gave him the two fish. Suleiman, he went to his place where he sleep and under, under, under the stairs. He's a poor now. And he opened the fish and he found the ring. Isn't it so beautiful? Now, I change the Muslim to say I'm lying and this does not exist in the books of Muslims. Anyone want to challenge me? <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to keep you long because I want to let you go relax and enjoy your dreams. And now all of you think about how you can fool your mother-in-law because she might have a party when you die. So you buy a stick and be sure that termite, or maybe treat it, like, you know, spray it so termite can get close to it or maybe paint it, you know, just paint it. Uh, so like your mother-in-law, she opened the door on you, but you are dead now, you know, you are dead. But you are standing and your mother-in-law she say uh are you there my son-in-law and you don't, don't answer okay but you are dead anyway but she will not notice that you are dead because you are standing my friend so beautiful and your mother-in-law you know she spent her life thinking that you are standing and that she will say to herself oh my son-in-law how powerful he is he can stand like this all this time for a year you are standing and you don't even sit down you are a hero my friend how you can do that you don't even go to the bathroom i mean how you can hold it don't you need to eat or something? <laughs> True story. <laughs> and you know, the funny is, they want to try to convince us that Islam is a religion. 
and uh, <laughs> oh boy look look here look, look at the details look at the details because we have to explain to you we have to explain to you we cannot do that so then nothing informed in the genie of his death except the little worms of the earth which kept slowly <laughs> slow look how slowly it is like slowly slowly groaning or gowning away his stick do you see how slowly it is it took them a year a year and you know what there is no way Suleiman he was using like a good kind of uh, lumber I think he was using wood he bought from Home Depot so like the, those uh, worms they open uh, their eyes in the morning <sighs> okay what is for breakfast they go to the to the stick of cinnamon <laughs> and they start like mm, and then their belly start, like is full so now we stop we take a nap okay <laughs> took them a year brother a year <laughs> And, and by the way, like uh, the wives of Suleiman, when they entered the room, they did not notice there is somebody eating his steak, like the, uh, the, those that are might all over. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, anyway. Obviously, truly, I am convinced that there is a purpose of this religion and the purpose is to believe in Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry, you know. And, you know, it's very, very deep. This is very deep religion, and you know we can find a lot of uh, purpose there. I mean, uh, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of the story anyway? I mean, you see, Allah He spoke about Jesus' crucifixion in less than eight words, and the story of the ants and the flying car. But He have a lot of time for it. I mean, what we learn from this? What is this? And why Allah did not give Muhammad the same? Why he did not give him the ring and the flying carpet and the flying horse? And the... <laughs> and look, look, uh, 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 Philip, Philip, he is supposedly smart. Look what he is quoting for you. Philip, you are so deep, man. You are so deep. You see, they cannot refute us. They can't answer, so they try to change the topic. But no problem, Philip. I'm here to serve you, my friend. You are welcome. Look what Philip, he said to us. He said, he quote from the Old Testament, that a human, they will bake their uh, food with dunk of uh, a human or animals. Uh, Abdul, do you want me to show you that the Muslim, they do that until now? So what the verse there is saying, that a human being, Will suffer a lot to the point they will use even their dunk to cook in it not to eat it and if I go right now in a prophet Google you idiot you will see that this is exactly what your Muslims today do uh, I will show you Islamic countries not any other countries Very silly people, you know, look what we are showing them, the stupidity in the Quran, and look what they show us. So, if you go and search uh, for animal dunk fuel or human fuel, uh, which countries you will feed, see they are doing uh, that? Like, is that Bangladesh and Pakistan, my friend? Is that Bangladesh and Pakistan? Hmm? Do you see it? So if this is a problem for you, what well obviously you are against your fellow Muslims. Oh, here we go. This is a Muslim lady. She is working in the dunk and this is to make a fuel. Is that bad? Is that what do you think? You know, all of you, you use that, and until lately, like until the Western, they find the oil for you. Otherwise, all the Middle East, all of them, with no exception, they use the poo of the animals, and even their poo mix it with the dry grass and make a fuel of it. And then they cook on it, because the purpose of that, look, she is making a bread for you. Do you see it, Philip? Those are the Muslims, those are not the Christians. So, 
a very silly argument you know they are they are bankrupt and you know and we are showing you the stupidity of the Quran and uh, this is what you get away this is the problem okay no problem and even your prophet he used even to clean his bum with the uh, with dunk you know and then he claimed that Allah told him that the dunk of the animals is the food of the genie <laughs> <laughs> all right uh anyway you know so when when they speak about the purpose of uh, of islam i really laugh because i don't find any purpose except disturbing peace of mankind uh spreading hate uh killing each other muslims even killing muslims non-stop since the time of muhammad until now uh believing in fictions and stupid stories and then making yourself think that you are superior because Islam is a su supremacist cult Islam teach that Islam is supremacist white religion and Muslims they have the right to enslave everybody and to put a leech around every human neck and as you see this is what Muhammad he said you are the best for mankind, the best of mankind. Chapter 3, verse 110. Okay, what is the best for mankind? What does that mean? You might think that maybe the scientist, maybe no. The best for mankind is those who bring the mankind and they have a chain around their necks. Islam is a very ugly, disgusting cult. It is uh, the purpose of it to disturb peace, to create war, to spread hatred, and to make you believe in the false god, his name is Allah. This is why I say in the conclusion of the purpose of Islam is it is satanic. And based on what I showed you, that Allah, he made Adam sin. Allah, he make you sin. And then Allah will punish you for your sin. Obviously, Allah is driving you not and make you feel stupid. And then you lose your ability to think deeply. You know, when, when even the Quran says that Allah uh, is the one who decides for you, how much adultery you would do so why Allah will punish you for adultery if Allah is the one who wrote for me my destiny and the destiny include everything why does God he want to punish me for a fixed portion of adultery which a man he will do in as a must of necessity as you see he must commit it's not like a something you do willingly you must commit so why Allah will punish me for such a thing obviously this cult is uh, satanic for everything lead us to Satan and uh, you know this religion is just try to convince you by tempting you you know uh, the first question I asked myself when I was very young uh, this was just last year by the way uh, when I start reading the Quran and then I find that the Quran is promising me as an example women would be depressed I mean what why does God he promised me such a promise what what is for I mean what is going to what is missing there why does God he is God he is and when you say God we speak about something holy we believe that there is a holiness form uh, of something mis mysterious but for sure he is holy then we find this God he is speaking to our desire sexual desire why does God he want me to believe in him in exchange he will give me women with big breast and what is the value of big breast for God you see if somebody come to you let's say you have a birthday and thank God I never have a birthday party I don't believe in them uh, because I mean why people celebrate their birth I mean what, what for I mean do you think you live in heaven <laughs> anyway so uh, if you have a birthday party and then you invite your friends and one of them he give you a book that is saying how to be successful in business the other one how to be a, a good father the other one he gave you a book uh, how uh, to be uh, good in ethic with the society and one of them he says to you he gave you a, a, a playboy or let us say a sex video porn okay the, the gift to speak of the one who is giving the gift correct telling you how each one of them he think my gift speak on me what is my gift to you 
So now we are talking about God, not about a bunch of guys who they are maybe too young, they are horny, they are teenage, they are, you know, drunk, maybe. But this is God. So what is the God or what kind of God he promised me in this private part, women who have an endless vagina fit for that in this private part of the male, women with big boobs, what, what, 70 years orgasm, there is something wrong. The Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And I have no better words than what the words of my Lord said. From their fruits, you shall know them. If this is the fruit of your God, well, I have to say this God is a pimp. For this is what pimps they do. If you ever been in Las Vegas, you know, I when I used to be with the army, they used to buy us ticket. We don't control the ticket where to stop. So sometimes, most of the time actually, uh, the, the airline stop in Las Vegas and sometimes even they give you a hotel. And then you go in the bathroom in the hotel or in the, which is a casino anyway. Uh, you'll find little cards in the bathroom where men they stand to do their business. You will find little cards have pictures of girls, naked girls, and there's numbers to call, prostitution. And they will find that those girls with big boobs, you know, big boobs, okay? Yeah. So this is Allah. Allah is tempting you. Look, he says to you, you have a garden and there's a grave, sorry, a, a grape in the garden. And right away, he connect the grape and the garden to women. He didn't even mention the word women, sadly. I mean, look like women are not exist even in the, in the dictionary of Allah. He mentioned big boobs. You see, in the translation, they say here to you, women. But in Arabic, nowhere it says women. Nowhere. It says big boobs. As simple as that. And then after that, a cup. Cup of what? Of wine. So wine, food, sex. That is Allah. Obviously, there is something badly behind this cult. A true God, he did not need some such a such an advertising for himself in such a way. And if you believe in me, I will give you women with big boobs, and you will have seventy years orgasm. That cannot be true. So when the Lord He says, "From their fruits you shall know them," I believe this is the Bible, and this is the wisdom, and this is the word of God from their fruits, not from what they say. All of us, we say things and we do sin. All of us, we are sinners. If anyone says to you, he is not a sinner, he's lying to you. All of us, we are sinners. But the Lord, he made it clear from their fruits, which means we have bad fruits or we have good fruits. So if you are a person who have only bad fruits, obviously you are following the devil for sure. If you are a person who has a fruit, let us say the ugly one is more than the good ones, Obviously, you are satanic too. But if you are a person who have a bad fruits in a big, nice tree full of good fruits, that is the way a human being must be or should be. Resisting the bad fruits, like you try to make them drop from your branches and you try your best to give good fruits. So a human being, he sin, but his sin should not be covered in all his branches, should be something he is resisting it's like an illness sickness like a fungus over the tree and this tree is trying to fight the fungus to stop the fungus from spreading around in islam islam itself is a fungus when a fun when a grow in your head you don't think about god no more you think about women sex if you go and read the stories or you watch the videos of those sheikhs talking about what the women they will do to you when you enter the bedroom they will jump on you they will start kissing you all over. I mean, even the description is disgusting. Uh, why this God uh, is like that? Uh, Mr. Philip is saying, can I attack your book? You stupid, you just did. Isn't it you the one who posed for me? About the dunk a few minutes ago? And isn't it your prophet he keep attacking us from the first page in the Quran? where he says, don't make us like the lost Christians and the cursed Jews. Don't you recite the chapter of Al-Fatiha five times a day? Don't you recite a chapter of At-Tawbah where it says, kill the Christians and the Jews? 
So can you take their book? I mean, look, when they are unable to answer, they play victim. And that is another side of the satanic cult. They attack your book 24 hours, seven days a week. Actually, if you go to all the churches anywhere in the world, you will not find anyone, any church, speaking against Islam. Nowhere. But you will not find a single mosque. Don't speak every day against Christianity and Judaism and the Hindus, etc. So when you start spanking this cult, they play victim. And not only that, you know, I, for me, with my experience with this cult, the Muslim, they make fun of you 24 hours, 7 days a week for following the Bible. The Bible, man, <laughs> Bible, it's corrupt, brother. But the second you start doing as I do, they say to you, is that what Jesus taught you? Isn't it Jesus says the one who gave, hit your right cheek, give him the other one? Huh? Well, you make fun of me 24 hours, 7 days a week, all my life. And the second I start spanking you, you start asking me to be Christian. I thought Christians are not good. I thought Christianity is horrible. Do you see the stupidity? I thought you are Christian. You know, actually once I had a fight, you know, a physical fight, real fight. And then the guy, after he got what he deserved, he says to me, I thought you are Christian. So he, he thought I'm a Christian, so I would be nice. You know, I would not beat him up. So he came, he started like, you know, uh, harassing and doing stupid stuff. And he pushed me first time. I said, don't do that, man. Second time. Anyway, he got what he deserved. And then after that, he said to me, I thought you are Christian. <laughs> I said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought if you are a Christian that's mean I can beat you and you are very nice you Jesus says to you if I hit you in the right cheek don't give him the other one my friend Jesus he says that about the law to obey the law don't be violent to be evil don't return evil by evil but if you are a scumbag well I will teach you how to behave don't worry be happy so they make fun of you 24 hours seven days a week and the second uh, you show them how stupid their book, they ask you to be Christian again. A Christian who don't speak about Islam. Is that what Jesus taught you? To speak against other people's religion? To disrespect their belief? Yes, Jesus, he taught me that actually. Jesus even, he did more. Jesus, he said, he called them, he, he called even the Jews who they are worshiping the true God, he called them hypocrites. Not like you worshiping false God, kissing black stones, and yet you claim you are not a pagan. So Jesus, he taught me, and from Jesus we learn. And Jesus, his holiness, is what we follow. Not a guy who claimed to be a prophet of God, yet he have zero miracles. Even the Arab, they keep saying to him, why you don't have a sign, just one sign? Can you give us one sign? And then Muhammad, he said to them, oh, Allah, he told me that he refused to give you a sign because people don't believe in them anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Philip, Philip. You can have 10,000 verses from the Bible, still you can't answer what I'm saying. You can't answer one verse of what I'm saying. And this is what you must then do. And instead of refuting us, you run forward. Let me show you from the Bible, okay? <laughs> so what we will do with this madness in the front of us? Let me show you from the Bible. My friend, in the Bible it says, Jesus, he walked in water. Jesus, he resurrected people from death. Jesus, he was holy. In the Quran, it says that too. But in the Quran too, it says Muhammad was filthy. And even he said that Allah said to him, May Allah, may Allah. <laughs> I can't believe it. May Allah forgive your sin. Like what's wrong with you? How Allah, look, the Muslim translate the word sin as fault. How the word sin became fault? Very simple, change the translator. So while Jesus in the Bible is forgiving sin, he forgives sin. And the Muslim, they say to you, I challenge you, show me one verse in the Bible says, Jesus, I'm God. He forgives sin, you idiot. Even the Jews, they said to him, who is this guy who forgives sin? And they said to him, he said to them, Jesus, why you want to kill me? They said, we are not killing you for, for an act, you, wrong act you did, but for claiming to be God. 
how he claimed to be God. He forgives sin. He said to the person, he said to the Jews, he said, which one is easier to say to him, your sin is forgiven, or to say to him, stand up, carry your chair and walk. This is how easy it was to Jesus. Your sin is forgiven. While your prophet here saying that Allah told him, that Allah saying to Allah, may Allah forgive your sin. Good luck with that. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. Don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends. And then they will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam made by a dummy for the dummy. Don't be a dummy. We love Muslims. Yes, Jesus, he ordered us to love everybody. And God himself, he said, for God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. So yes, we love the Muslims, but we don't love the evil of Islam. Islam is evil. Muhammad is evil. So we love you to save you. We love you to show you. We love you to guide you. But we don't love you to give you false words and just to make you happy. A person who cares for you and you are taking drugs or you are sick or you are doing something wrong is a person who stands against your wrong to fix it so you don't go to hell. We are trying to save you. We are not here to make fun of you. We are here to show you that Islam is wrong. Islam is a stupid. And if you decide to believe in it, this is your business. But for us, it's obvious. From their fruits, you shall know them. And with the words of the Lord, we end. Thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon again. Take care.